Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Richard. This is my channel. I'm going to have myself a drink. And we're going to talk about gender roles. This is a uh, noon fresh lime sport caffeine tablet. It's designed to give me electrolytes. And this is an Arizona Sunrise Hard Seltzer Lemon. I am combining these because the hard seltzer lemon alone tastes like old dishwater. But I gotta use it up because this can here, this can represents five cents that I'm going to donate to an orphanage. Also, these tend to be a little on the flat side, so having something to give them a little more bubble is probably a good thing. I mean, you know. But, um, yeah. When I was in college, I took a class in sociology. Sociology shouldn't exist. Sociology is psychology, but applied to groups. It should just be called group psychology because it's about how human beings think. Okay. The thing about this was we watched a documentary where they talked about, you know, they showed this man he had a sick child, you know, and his wife worked, he worked. So he had a job where, you know, the doctor would, hey, you got a doctor's appointment tonight. And he would talk to his boss, say, okay, can I get out of work? I got, um, got to take my daughter to the doctor. And, you know, his coworkers gave him a hard time. Oh, before I go any further, let me remind you that for every thousand subscribers I get, I do purchase one of these bracelets from Four Ocean. Four Ocean pulls up out of trash on the ocean every time I do that. If you'd be so kind as to comment, like, and subscribe, you'd be doing your part for a better world. Now, um, so this gentleman, his daughter was, I believe, an infant and she was sick, and his co-workers were giving him a hard time, saying, you know, my wife normally handles this. And he's like, look, you know, I've got a job where I can get out and take care of my child, and... My wife does it, all right? So, you know, this uh, led to the discussion. You know, what do we think of this? And my take on the subject was that these men were evil. Because having a penis does not mean... I should be less responsible for my offspring than a woman, okay? There are two things in this world that should be woman's work. Birthing and breastfeeding, right? Once, once those things are accomplished, responsibility should very much be shared. But, now, I mean, this is something every parent should do. Every parent should walk in, walk into the bathroom or, you know, walk up to a mirror, look in that mirror and say, I am responsible for this child. Do not assume that someone else will take care of your child. Be responsible. You know... My grandfather, on my father's side, his name was Leland. I have his middle name, Leland. I don't remember the man. I believe I met him, but he died when I was very young. And, um, you know, he wasn't exactly the kind of person you should leave children with. 
Which brings up the question, why did my two aunts leave their children with Grandpa? Well, I think the one of my aunts had the uh, children first, and that was the one. And she had three kids, I think by two or three different men. No shame to that, no shame to that. But I mean, you know, her kids had some trouble. So this is not like Grandpa was not responsible for it. And it's like... The old man, like, she talked to the old man, be like, yeah, these are the movies you're allowed to take my children to, and these are the, uh, you know, foods we want you to eat. And, of course, you know, drop the kids off on a Friday. Saturday morning, he'd get all the kids out of bed in their pajamas. Don't comb your hair. Don't brush your teeth. We're going for ice cream. And he had this car that he paid the kids to paint with house paint. And he'd drive up to a stoplight. You know, the light would be red. And a driver would come next to him. And they'd look over at this car. This weird house paint painted old car. With this fat, scary looking dude in the driver's seat. And these kids with their messed up hair and their pajamas. And then the old man would just give it enough gas to freak out the driver, who might then... Sound effects. It's a car. Who might then pull halfway into the damn intersection because he thought the light had turned, right? That was Grandpa. He had an effed up sense of humor, apparently. I wouldn't know. Don't remember the man. And, of course, Grandpa would then take his kids, his grandchildren, to the most upsetting R-rated movie he could find. And for the next week, the kids would be having nightmares. All right? I mean, he's an adult, lived alone. I mean... My grandmother was still alive, and they were not divorced, but they lived in separate houses. And, you know, you didn't trust children with my grandfather. So you as a parent should always, you know, like, hey, who is it that's taking care of my kid? That's what a parent does. A parent has always got to have that mentality, you know, you, it used to be, there was a time in human history where if your kids were going to public school, you had a tendency to invite your children's teachers to dinner. Okay, This was a courtesy. You said, you know, come to my house. I want to meet you. I want to know the person who is taking care of my child during the day. This is called parenting. Now, in the modern day, I believe we're too poor to do that. I don't have children. I don't have children for the very specific reason of I've never had the means to take care of them properly. And I mean, I don't want children to grow up the way I grew up, which was poor, you know? My mother... Well, look, my mother was a kind of person that said, we're going to have experiences, not things, all right? And she would take us on these vacations where we would drive across the country to go see her family. And we would watch, or we would go to like Civil War reenactments and national monuments and things like that. That was my mother. She expected... She thought experiences were more important than physical things. So, yeah, I would go to the the uh, Goodwill store and find clothes. And that's and I tried to make things last. I remember once I bought sneakers, you know, tennis shoes that were too big intentionally because I wanted them to last. And I wore them to the heels wore out. And then 
My mother had passed away at that point, and my father looked at me and said, why are you doing that? Why did you do that? It's like, well, because I wanted them to last. And it was always, you know, I was vo always very conservative when it came to my wardrobe. You, you notice I don't have a lot of clothes, okay? You see this shirt a lot, right? And then I've got my blue shirt, and then I've got my Hawaiian shirts, which I only wear in videos. I never wear them out of the house. And it's there's a reason for that, because, you know, I actually have... In this room, I have this big wad of old clothing, and it doesn't fit anymore because I'm fat. And I think a lot of that stuff is size 2XL. This, I think, is a 4XL. But it's like, you know, I don't need a lot of shirts. This is a, something of an annoyance when I do laundry because, you know, it's like I have something like three pairs of shorts. I always wear shorts, and I have pants for work. I, you know, only wear them when I go to work. And just because I'm more comfortable in shorts and it's often not cold enough where I live to wear pants. But, um, you know, that was something ingrained in me with my mother. I forgot where I was going with this. Okay, but, you know, yes. I grew up poor. I didn't have a lot of things. You know, we didn't have the money to get things fixed if they broke. We had to deal with old and broken. And, you know, I'm still that person today. My house needs to be completely remodeled. Okay. I need to find somebody and I need to pay a lot of money, more than I make in an entire year, to get my house made just livable. So... I don't want to have children because I don't think I can give them the life that they would deserve. And one of the things about my life, making this video, I've always been kind of trying to chase that affluence that I would be able to give children the life that they deserve. I want children. I'm kind of old for it, but I want children. I want to have children. I want them to live a, a fun life. I want them to go out there and, and be able to have experiences. I want to be the dude that, you know, it's like, okay, I have a child now. And I want that child to be able to play a musical instrument. You know, my mother wanted me to be able to play a musical instrument. And I was learning the accordion. Mother had an interesting sense of humor. And then she died. And my brother told me, you ever play that accordion again? I'm going to beat the shit out of you. He was not a very nice person. He was 14. Okay. Not an adult and mentally ill. And it was like, you know, I don't particularly love the accordion. I wish I had gotten a more dignified instrument. Uh, I mean, you know, I also have a piano, but it's way out of tune. But at my stage in life, they say you're not going to learn. You're not going to learn an instrument. That's not necessarily true. It's just that it would take a long time. I mean, if I practiced an instrument for five years, I would probably be pretty good at it. But you would have to practice every day, and I mean not for fifty minutes. We're talking hours here. It takes approximately ten thousand hours to learn to play an instrument from scratch. If you already play an instrument, it should take a lot less time. But, I mean, it's just, it's like anything else, like learning a language. In order to learn that language, you have to really be motivated. You can't be doing it in 15 minutes a day. You need to be spending hours. You need to be ingraining it into you. So that's one of those things. But, you know... When I was in grade school, I remember there was this little Japanese girl... She played the piano. Before she graduated high school, she was playing professionally. That's one of those things. And I mean, it is actually part of my heritage, common amongst my people, to play an instrument and be extremely apt at it. That is part of 
um, the Jewish culture is one of the things you did was you learned an instrument because no matter what, so long as you have that instrument, this is a skill that can be marketed. Somebody needs an instrument played. The accordion is a common instrument for uh, Jews. The mainstay instrument is the violin. Okay. It is extremely Jewish to play the violin. All Jews should probably play an instrument. It's just a Jewish thing. But... You know, there, there's just one of those things is that my mother was too sick to be much of a parent. And her first child, my brother, was a very difficult child. You know, he was the kind of child who just didn't want to behave himself. And my father was not the kind of person who wanted to be a father. He wanted to be a son. He wanted to be the one who came home every day and the mom made his lunch and everything, everything have you. He was not a very um, effective human being. Okay? And they're both passed away now. So, I mean, I've gotten on a rant here, but the point there being, the point I've been making is that if you have a child, you should be responsible for that child, regardless of what's in your pants. Not everybody agrees with that. I do believe the law agrees with that, though. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. I'm Richard. Woo! I'm Danger Ducky, and I'd say it'd be gnarly if you comment, like, and subscribe. Then we could catch a sick wave together!